Here's Talk ZB, it is Fishing with Crimpy. Happy Saturday morning. We've got James Cameron in the studio. We're talking fish and future search. Now, out of the 70 people, I was saying before, I was quite surprised that there wasn't more argy-bargy because there were a few grey-haired old members yes, there, there that were pretty entrenched in their ways. Now, they, they've they done a lot for fishing in terms of advocacy on a voluntary level over the years, but some of these old grey grey boys, they tend to, tend to get a little bit entrenched, but we didn't end up with any blood on the carpet. Yeah, no, it, um, they brought experience into the room. Um, I think uh, a lot of them wanted to get their point of view across. A couple, bo- couple bought their Zimmer frames into the room as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I saw you was parking at the front of the room. Um, I, I actually hey. think that... Sorry, sorry. I, I, I'm just uh, the audience today. This is great. This is good. Well you just done. Listen, Carry on, Regan, You just listen. Um, I, I think the way that, uh, that Sandra um, you know, ran and facilitated the event meant that everyone got to say something uh, without the room being overtaken mm. by, by arguments and personal attacks. So that was quite good. Um, and, uh, you know, I, at the end of the day, um, the eight areas of common ground were reached. And uh, that was the target of, of, of the whole process. To find common ground and, and chart a way forward, that's one of the criticisms that's been levelled even before this got off the ground, is that it was likely to be another talk fest. Is that the feeling that you got from it that uh, once people left, that it'll just dissolve into nothing? Or do you feel a little bit positive? I, I was thinking that on sort of day one and two, but, you know, by the end of day three, um, everyone, there was a mood change, there was a mm. shift in mood. Um, everyone left the room feeling like they'd got their point across, like they've done something and they've bought everything they could bring to the table. Um, I mean, you can't ask for much more than that. So by the time, um, you know, we, we reached and discussed the eight areas of, of common ground, um, and then worked out um, where to from here. Um, you know, the establishment of the steering committee uh, has been really active since then. So I'm looking right. forward to what happens from here. Take us through what the eight areas of common ground are. How long have you got? As long as it takes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess one of the key things was um, one goal is to ensure that a healthy marine environment is there to be enjoyed by all um, and that we all take pride in an abundant and healthy marine environment and fish stocks. Um, the, the, the unity um, concept was big and inclusion within the recreational fishing community uh, and uh, a, a, a striving to ensure the equity of access is, um, is fundamental. So without getting you know too much into the words, I think those are the key concepts yeah. that came out of it. Now people are wanting to follow on what came out of it and find out a little bit more about Fish and Future Search. Where can they go to find information? Uh, the best way to find out is online. Um, everyone's got access to that, we hope. Uh, the website is www.fishandfuturesearch.co.nz and uh, there's a lot of information on there. There's a great video scribe um, that details the process uh, and the, the news section or the blog uh, goes into a bit more depth on the daily outcomes. So in terms of, um, of what's going to happen from here, um, there's going to be more material coming on there soon. Yeah, I think people have to realise too, um, a lot of people expect solutions to be instant and say, well, there's a problem there or you're going to make change, you're going to affect change and it has to be done overnight or this year. I think the reality that we took from the Fish and Future Search thing is that it's more of a journey. In other words, we, we're going to have to affect a change in people's attitudes, yeah. a, a swing in public feeling. Uh, there's got to be a lot of consensus sorted out over the thing. So this this is a process that's probably going to take several years or more. Yeah, I think we're looking at about a three or four year window uh, till we introduce that compulsory thousand dollar recreational levy. Um, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> you just killed fish and future search right then and right there. Now that was a joke. That is an out. Yeah, and, out and we're going to have we're going to have floods of phone calls saying <laughs> over my dead body. <laughs> believe me, grumpy. believe me, that was one of the things that came out of fish and future search out of the contract at the weekend that there was an absolute abhorrence and an absolute big no to any form of compulsory licensing. So before you come shooting from the lip, that has been well and truly put out there and laid to rest. Yeah, thanks for that, James. <coughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, that's a controversial statement. Um, but uh, that, that was something that some people brought into the room. Yeah, they did. And um, yeah, I'd like to re- reiterate uh, Crimpy's um, feelings here about it. It's um it's obviously a, a really no go area. Mm. Um, it'll be a political hot potato. 
And, however, uh, however, for this to carry on, people must realise that it's costly. It does cost money, so there will have to be a fundraising scheme. Now, that's just about all we've got time for this week. But don't forget, more details can be found in the fishing paper next month when it comes out. And check out our text to win competition. All right, see you next week. Goodbye. Thank you.